Standards exist in many sectors, such as technology, manufacturing, or even food. You know, like the unwritten rule of no pineapples on your pizza. Just kidding, no judgment here. Similarly, each token on every blockchain adheres to certain standards. They tell people how to create, deploy, and issue new tokens on their underlying blockchain. For instance, stablecoins like USDC, DAI, or utility tokens like UNI all adhere to the most popular token standard, that is, ERC-20. It's a fungible standard, such that Kimberly's DAI token will always have the same exact value as Shirley's DAI. Also, Jake, an Ethereum developer, can code his smart contract assured with the knowledge that it can easily interact with ERC-20 tokens. In any case that Jake wants to create his ERC-20 token, he'll have to implement these functions listed on Ethereum's docs to lay down the foundation for whatever type of cryptocurrency he wishes to create. And if he later decides to launch an NFT project like Bored Apes, for instance, he'll have to adhere to ERC-721 guidelines. Unlike ERC-20, ERC-721 tokens are non-fungible, meaning that Kimberly's Bored Ape is not interchangeable with Shirley's Bored Ape NFT because of its unique specifications. On top of digital collections, ERC-721 tokens are used to represent domain names and even tokenization of real-world assets. However, ERC-721 and ERC-20 have their limitations. For one, if Kimberly wants to transfer in-game assets like coins and non-fungible assets like swords or armor, she would need to execute multiple transactions, which is inefficient and expensive. This is where ERC-1155, a standard created to tackle this challenge faced by game developers, comes in. It allows a single contract to support multiple types of assets, whether fungible, non-fungible, or even semi-fungible tokens. It also enables batch minting and transfers where multiple tokens can be minted or transferred in a single transaction, therefore better utilizing Ethereum's resources. All right, now on to the last token standard for today, ERC-4626, aka the tokenized vault standard. This standard was put together for yield-bearing tokens, which are designed to self-generate interest over time. Let's check out an example of this type of token. If Kimberly deposits her USDC to the compound lending protocol, she'll receive corresponding CUSDC tokens. At first, Kimberly's USDC token will be equal to one CUSDC token, but over time, the value of CUSDC may rise on its own as it accrues yield. So, for example, one CUSDC may be equal to 1.06 USDC in a few years. ERC-4626 provides a standard framework for developing such tokens, rather than each yield token and vault coming up with its own. The benefits of this include optimizing costs and security, as well as ease of integration between different protocols. Are you familiar with other ERC token standards? Comment any other two below.